everybody scout crafty here again it's friday tgif you made it through another week and today i promised you we have something pretty special you remember the huge tool tool haul that i got from tony and renee well uh there was something else that uh, that they had uh and they gave me and i'm i'm thrilled to death to have it and um i want to talk a little bit about it so let me show you what it is and let me give you a little bit of a history where it came from and this is what I'm so excited about. Now, I know you're looking at this figuring what on earth is this? Well, let me show you. Uh, you see this item here, I believe this is what's called a door plate. And uh, it's made of bronze. And this would go on to the door where you would normally open it up with your hands. Now, this on the other hand, I'm not sure if it's either a door plate or a register. Uh, a register is something that goes on the wall to let the heat come through or whatever. I don't know, but uh, it could be a door plate because they're similar. I don't know. But whatever it is, these came off of the Normandy. And how cool is that, you know, to know that this is actually a piece of history. And uh, we'll go through everything about the, about the Normandy and whatnot. But um, look at this. Look at this. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to wash it. And then we're going to try and get off the tarnish and patina off of these. Okay, we have some regular distilled white vinegar that we added to this uh, bucket. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add some regular table salt. Regular salt, okay, to the vinegar. And you can see what that does. That'll make a uh, an acidically uh, positive fluid and then we're going to put the plates in and we're going to have to put them diagonally because this is it but we're going to give it a minute for this uh, salt to dissolve okay the salt is nicely dissolved we'll place this in here okay we're going to try and make sure that these are covered but uh as you can see it's a little bit large let me try the smaller plates first here put the smaller plates in they seem to fit better and we're going to figure out a way to get this i might have to add more vinegar now, I added the rest of the vinegar, brought it to the level above the uh, the pieces here. I added some extra salt so that the solution is good. But now, I'm not sure if this is going to work. This is a, uh, a traditional method of cleaning brass. I don't know if it will work on bronze. What I did was I took a small section here over to the wire brush. And, and, you know, that would be real tedious to do all these by wire brush, especially trying to get in the, you know, the grooves and stuff. I was hoping for a, a better way to do this. So, but we'll see. I don't want to have to, you know, wire brush these because it'll take forever. And I really don't have the patience for that. So let's see what happens. We'll give this some time and see what it does. Now, like I said, these articles came from the steamship Normandy. It was one of the best, if not the best ocean liner ever, ever made. And when you think of ocean liners, a lot of times you think of the Titanic or its sister ship, the Olympic, or you might even think of the Queen Mary. But nothing beats the Normandy. The Normandy was the biggest, the fastest, the largest ship that they built during the golden age of steamships, ocean liners. Uh, the interiors were unmatched. They were absolutely beautiful, done in an Art Deco style. And while other steamships were catering towards immigrants and third-class steerage, the Normandy was basically uh, first-class passage. Now, at the time, this ship was state-of-the-art. It took over six years to build. And on one of its trips to New York, uh, the United States was at war and decided to commandeer the ship, and they were going to turn it into a troop carrier. And they were going to convert it, so they were salvaging it from uh, New York Harbor. They were taking all the stuff out from the inside of the ship, and while they were welding, the KPOC life preserver caught on fire. The whole ship went on fire, and within 24 hours of trying to put it out, they filled it with water, it listed, and it uh, flipped over. And that was the end of this glorious ship until it went to scrap. Here we have our overnight soak in vinegar and salt and the uh, far from impressive. That isn't going to work. We're going to have to go manual. Here we have a five minute scrub with Barkeeper's Friend. We're getting a little bit of the color back. However, still not impressive. Let's see what else we can do. And we're calling this project done. I think the real hero of, uh, of this restoration, of course, Barkeeper's Friend is really good stuff. And, um, well, let's take a look at, at how these came out. Uh, you can see this is originally what they probably would have looked like. Maybe even a, 
a better luster because they were new and um you know the i have a real soft wire brush for that uh, lathe and i've been using that so you could see how it came out and again i'm not sure what these are i think they're more of a register than maybe a door this is a, a probably a door plate that would be on the doors as you push open however i don't think this one is because uh i don't know some of the casting you look over here it's a little bit on the you see that like i think this might have been maybe ceiling vent covers i don't know because it definitely wasn't i mean although it's more ornate i don't know what i would like to hear your opinion on that now remember what it looked like remember this is what it was before you see the difference there right i mean it's a, it's a huge difference on what they look like before and again you know br bronze brass copper that all tarnishes again but you know it gets to the point where I don't know anybody in their right mind who would prefer <laughs> this look to, uh, you know, with all the gook and gunk and, you know, to uh, to what it would look like originally. Now, the vinegar and uh, and salt bath. I, look, I did this one without any vinegar and salt bath. It looks identical. All I used was Barkeeper's Friend to start and the wire brush to finish. So as far as I'm concerned, that was a wasted step. But they swear that that works on uh, on brass and things like that. So really interesting pieces here. And now I'll uh, Renee wanted a wanted a couple of these for the house if if I could clean them up. And I think these are presentable. She could put these on. Okay, so real quick, I want to do this cleanup because this thing's bothering me. It's a beautiful tap handle. But uh, it was it was very tight, and uh, you know when this the problem with with tapping fluid is it works fantastic, but when it dries up, it's almost like a glue. So you always got to spray your your tools down afterwards so it doesn't get because that'll hamper the tap's ability to pass through smoothly. So. You know, this should be have been addressed with 50-50. Don't be stingy with the 50-50. Let's clean this up. Let's clean this up. And I'll show you how smooth we can get. Okay, we just did a quick cleanup because I am definitely going to put this in my drawer. So I'm not going to do it over the top. But what, look at how interesting this is. If you look over here, it says on the top. Can you read that right there? It says, Wells Brothers. And it says Greenfield, Massachusetts. And then over here on the bottom, it's a little giant. You see right there where my little giant, it says. And this is a number zero zero tap handle. And oh, it's just beautifully made. And <clears throat> uh, everything's so nice and smooth now. And what happens is what was interesting. I put it in the lathe because this tip was a little bit chowded up. And I want to fix it. So when I put it in the lathe and I was spinning it, it started gripping and spinning out. So that's actually threaded in there. That's replaceable tip. Just ingenious, beautifully made. It's a uh, left-handed thread so that when you tighten down on your, your tap, you will not uh, loosen up that point. And you can see this is a small tap, what you would use uh, this tap handle for, something like this. And you can see just how beautiful that is. What a piece of work. That's one of the best $1 I ever spent at a flea market. Just beautiful. Now, here's that uh, tap that we cleaned up. And you can see how nice it looks. And, you know, it's really important to get that gunk out of there. Because with cutting fluid, the longer it sits in there, the harder it gets. And it really will gum up your, your threads when you try and do so. A clean tap is a sharp tap. Now, to make Tony's box, remember, we don't want the box to outshine the pliers, right? <laughs> we want the attention to be on the pliers and not the box. So, we're throwing it and we're using all scrap wood. This is a furring strip. These were used and sold to nail onto walls and then you would nail paneling onto this or something. These were throw, you know, but if you look around, you can always get one without knots. So, we got a nice piece here. We're going to make it and here's a piece of scrap ply. And then I have a piece of scrap plexiglass that will, I just cut a slit in here on the table saw. And uh, we're going to just box out this and make a sliding hatch so you can remove it. Okay, we are up in the attic again. Always nice when we get up here, right? Let's get that tag engraved for Tony, and let me show you what we're going to do and how we're going to do it.
Now, when I was a kid, I saw some guy doing engraving at a, uh, at a jewelry store, and I just thought this was the coolest machine ever. And I swore one day, I said, I'm going to get me one of those one day. And sure enough, here it is. I have two of them. This is called a New Hermes Pantograph Engraving Machine. And it's really interesting. Let me show you this a little bit This is made about. to engrave all kinds of stuff. You can see you can buy these little tags like this. You can engrave. These are engraving tags. But we're going to use a nice brass one here. And uh, we're going to engrave it. And what we're going to do is we're going to set it up. We're going to place it in here. And I'll, I'll show you what we do, how we do that. We're going to place it in here, tighten it down. And, uh, and then we're going to add the letters of what we want to say. And you can see here we have, you know, these are brass letters. And you buy them in different fonts. You know, these are getting pretty hard to come by now. And they're quite expensive because, you know, they're heavy because of shipping. So um, I have a couple sets. And, and so here we're going to put in memory of. Now, you see, you see I, N, in. You know, this E we're just using as a spacer. That we're not going to. And you got to pay attention because if you're not paying attention, you'll put the E on there. So in memory. And then we got that extra E for spacer. And how these go in here is you take the little letter like this and you place it in here and you slide it down okay and then you just slide it down into the middle we uh there's two little keepers these little keepers here will hold it in when we uh are happy where it is and i'll show you the operation it's pretty now cool. how these pantograph engravers work is you know the one size font here but you could increase it you can enlarge it or you can shrink it usually it's shrunk down because uh, you're usually putting on bracelets things like that now we have our brass plate mounted and tightened down and uh this is a little follower here see that point that point will go in these letters like this and when you want to, let's say we're going to do this E here, we put it in this E like this. I'm going to move my arm over, but you usually hold this ball and then you just trace it like this. And then when you bring this up and down, that'll make contact with the plate, you see? So that's how it works. And you could see here, you adjust the sides like this will be the end of in memory of, and this will be the beginning. So we want that font smaller and then we want his name bigger. So let me engrave that and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, now we put in his name here. We took out the in memory of, we put his name in here. And then we also increased the font size because we got a memory of them. We want his name to be a little bit more pronounced. So that's what we're gonna do now. So here we go, a nice uh, engraving job. And you know, you can put the bluing solution on the letters and it'll make them black against the brass. But I find that tarnish, you know, the letters do tarnish and uh, there is a lack of coating on the plate. So the, the letters will darken up over time. So let's get this downstairs on okay, the Okay, here's some interesting uh, uh, specs about the case. You can see here how we did it. And what we did is we took some uh, acrylic sheeting and uh, you see how we have the groove cut in all the way around. And when you want to open and close it, you just put this in here. That matches here. Now, to make sure that this acrylic sheeting don't fall out of here, out of that groove, not only did I epoxy it in, but I also pinned it in here with three pins going all the way up to just about a half a centimeter below the top here. So that really won't come out from opening and closing. But pretty interesting, huh? Now the felt is this uh, very thin craft felt you can get in any of the craft stores and you just cut it to size with a scissor. And we're calling this project done. Tony's case and uh, pliers restored for him. Let's take a look at the case what we got here. First of all, you could see here, it's in memory of Albert Alloy. It was Tony's dad and uh, you could see here that the pliers don't rattle around or anything, but check this out. When you want to look at them, you just slide this little plastic covering out and you can uh you can check out the pliers the little felt on the bottom and uh just lovely huh i think he's really going to enjoy this and when he wants to put it back together you know he can display this on his uh on his desk or whatever and he could just slide this up like this again it doesn't move around just really nice huh
from scrap wood, but again, you don't want the box to be <laughs> too much better than the pliers, right? So I think he's really going to enjoy this. Hey, what do you so think? So in closing, this was one heck of an episode, huh? Talk about a mosh. We've been all over the place from the Normandy to the little giant tap handle to... The... <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a great weekend. Take care now. Bye-bye. <laughs>